Hey guys, welcome back to Nat One Videos. Sorry it's been a while since posting any content, but life happens and you can only do what you can do. So about a month ago or so, my friend Gerard Boom from Shifting Lands invited me to be part of a small project looking at different ways to make natural looking rock faces for dioramas and tabletop terrain. We were joined by Thomas from Chickens Tabletop Crafting and Sasha from Tabletop Basement, and the idea was that we would all show our own favorite techniques. Gerard, Chicken and Sasha have all released videos today to show their results, so make sure to go and check out their builds after watching this video. I will leave links in the description below. Just for fun, here's a little comedy gold from one of our meetings. Last or our first shoot together was almost two months ago. And in that... Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, I'm out. The thing is that that was going perfectly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, we keep that in. <laughs> okay, moving on. As you can see, I use 3mm thick MDF for my base of the terrain, which is sturdy, durable, and easy to use. And the main material that I'm using for my build is PIR foam, not to be mistaken with XPS foam. PIR foam is roof insulation foam, and it is heat resistant, so there is no point in trying to cut this stuff with a hot wire foam cutter. It is, however, very easy to carve with a knife, and it is very easy to create rock-like structures. In different forums on Facebook etc I have seen lots of people discuss PIR foam and there is a very common misconception that PIR foam is dangerous because of the particles. There is even a common misconception that it contains fiberglass. Both of these are entirely untrue. According to the Ecotherm insulation product safety information in regards to inhalation of the dust particles and I quote, the dust is non-hazardous. Having said that, I always use a mask when using this material because any kind of dust is not pleasant to breathe and it's better to be safe than sorry. I just think it is a shame that such a useful crafting material gets unused because of disinformation about its toxicity. Anyway, back to the build. I wanted to make a rock overhang tunnel kind of thing. This was inspired by a Google image that popped up on my TV whenever I was hanging out with Colin, aka the Crazy Crafter. Apologies for the quality of this next clip though. I'm just um, filming uh, my Google TV because it's got some stratified rocks on the photograph. Stratified rocks, nice. <laughs> so not only did I want to create a rock overhang, but I also wanted to create a stratified layered rock texture. And this is where PIR foam comes into its own. I discovered this technique by accident when I did my skull cave build earlier this year and it couldn't be any easier. You simply get a strong bristle brush and brush firmly in the direction that you want your texture to go. The combination of carving with a knife and this brushing technique gives you a really organic natural look. Now back to the discussion about PR foam being non-hazardous. I forgot to mention that there is one hazard and that is the possibility of castration if you do not clean up your mess. Gladly this stuff is very easy to clean up with a good brush and a vacuum cleaner. Once all your rock textures are brushed in, I also recommend vacuuming off any particles from the piece so that they don't clog up your paintbrush at a later point in the build. And when all of the foam is secured into place, you can already see the makings of the stratified rock cavern and we are on to dressing up with some additional features and flocking. For large boulders, small rocks and debris, I pretty much always use different sizes of tree bark. Bark has an awesome texture and when painted it looks brilliant for rocky terrain. To see how you can use bark to create a larger rock face, be sure to check out Gerard's video today for some great tips. To get my smaller debris, I simply put the bark in a blender and then sieve out the fine dust. You can then apply the different grades of debris texture separately and build it up in a controlled way rather than just randomly sprinkling mixed grade over the whole piece. This means you can lay out larger boulders around the edges and smaller debris in the middle of the cavern as you would expect. And the basing glue for this is regular PVA glue, which dries clear. Not that it matters because we are going to paint it anyway. The reason I mentioned the PVA glue is that it can warp the MDF bases as it dries and contracts. So to prevent this, I tack my base down to a thicker board as it dries. This way, when the glue contracts, the board doesn't bend with it and you get a completely flat base. Okay, on to the paint job. It's quite tempting to just brush over this section, but the whole idea of this collaboration was to make a really clear tutorial on how to get realistic looking rock faces that beginners can follow. As always, I start with a base coat of black Mod Podge and work my way up from there. 
Next we have a graphite grey overbrushing, which I paint over the whole entire piece, but I'm not too concerned about getting into all of the cracks as the black base coat will help to accent the shadows. Then I use burnt umber to paint the gully in the centre of the piece because this is going to form a riverbed. And I also continue to dry brush the rest of the rocks with burnt umber to start bringing out the earthy tones in the rock face. I then lightened up my burnt umber with titanium white to create a tan colour and dry brushed over all of the rocks. This starts to bring out some of the highlights but also maintains those earthy tones. Followed by a green grey dry brushing. Rocks are never simply just grey, they have all sorts of colours running throughout and it's good to emulate this in your paint job. I then crushed up some light brown and green pastels into a fine powder to use as a makeshift pigment and applied it randomly over the whole piece before doing some highlights with green grey that I had mixed with titanium white over all of the edges and bumpy areas. And lastly I give the whole piece a dark brown wash which will seep into all of the cracks and crevices and give the impression of shadow and dirt build up. Moving on to the flocking, again a very simple process but for beginners very useful information. I use standard PVA glue in all the areas I want moss or grass and recently I've taken to using foam flocks. I use two different colours and sprinkle them on randomly to make sure that there is some variation. I do come back and do some static grass at a later point on in this build but first I wanted to pour the resin for the stream bed so I sealed the paint with some matte varnish. I did this specifically because I've used resin before and it reactivated the paint and it made some cloudy residue. This might not have been a problem with UV resin but I really didn't want to take the risk. The cool thing with UV resin is that you can work it a little bit as you're curing it. I used a toothpick to drag it through the resin as it cured to make some ripples, which saves me a bit of time later on uh, where I might have used acrylic medium gel or something like that. I then added some touches of white paint here and there around the rocks to make it look like the water was babbling and breaking around those areas. If you have any tips on a better way of doing this, please let me know in the comments below because I wasn't quite impressed with this, but it'll do the trick. So most streams and rivers that I've ever walked past seem to have twigs and logs sticking out of it, driftwood and that sort of thing. So I found a suitable twig and I just gave it a wash with Agrax Earthshade and glued it into place. Little details like this really help to add a little more life to the build and also in game these could become useful elements in the game. Then I needed some bushes and trees. This technique is not my idea. A couple of months ago my friends Luke from Geek Gaming Scenics and Benji from Benji's Hobbies did a collaboration video painting up tree beard models and they used sea foam with foam flocks glued on and it made the trees look more realistic and immersive. It's the best way I've seen of doing this so yoink I added that to my trick bag. You can find loads more awesome tricks like this on their channel so be sure to check them out. I also added one of my own hot glue string trees into the piece just for good measure. And lastly a little bit of static grass. I used some static grass basing glue from Nock and the Grassmaster 3.0 but to be honest you can probably just sprinkle this on and it will still look fantastic. I get some of my flocking products from Geek Gaming Scenics and I also use some flocking products from Nock and there are links in the description below this video if you guys want to pick any of those up. And that's it, on to my final reveal. I hope you enjoy it. Cheers! So there we go guys, I really hope you enjoyed that video and you got something useful out of it. I just want to say thanks to Gerard, Thomas and Sasha for inviting me to be part of this project. I really enjoyed the build up and please go and check out their videos. They've all done awesome builds and we've all done very different techniques. So yeah, you're going to enjoy that. And 
Also, before I go, I just want to say a massive thanks, as always, to my very patient patrons um, who you can see on the screen right now. Um, my content here on YouTube has been sparse lately and you guys are still supporting me. And yeah, I've been trying to update you over there as well. The builds are coming. Um, there's going to be a bit of a flood of builds coming out um, over this next period of time because I'm finally getting there with um, multiple projects happening at the same time. So stick around and there'll be more of that coming soon. Uh, thanks a lot, guys. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And yeah, I'll hopefully... Hopefully see you next time. Cheers. Bye.